Everyone, on this lesson you will learn how to change Cartesian form vectors into polar form and also the opposite, from polar form to Cartesian coordinates. On this exercise I have four vectors as you see on the screen with X and Y coordinates. This is the horizontal axis, the Y axis and shows the sketch. The vector G has coordinates 1,0. The vector B has coordinates 0, 0,2. The vector E has coordinates minus 1, 2. And the vector A has coordinates 1, comma, minus 1. And we want to express this in polar form. The vector to be in polar, polar form, we need to find the two parameters. the r and the angle phi. The r is the length of the vector and the phi is the angle it means to the horizontal going anticlockwise. And the zero is the horizontal axis. Starting is the horizontal axis zero. To write the vector G, if we start from the vector one minus one. Okay, let's start with the vector A. One minus one. To find the length, the r, I need to use the Pythagoras theorem and, and find the distance from the origin up to the vector, up to the point A. Okay, the origin is the starting position up to the A. Because I have a right angle triangle, I use the Pythagoras theorem. The vector A has coordinates one minus one. To find the r, the parameter r, I need to use the Pythagoras theorem and find the distance, the length of the vector, because I have a right angle triangle. The Pythagoras theorem is the hypotenuse square is equal to the base square plus height square. And using this formula, I have 1 square plus minus 1 bracket square. This gives you the square root of 2. This is the value of the r for the vector a. And we also need to find the angle phi for the vector a. find this angle, we need to take this right angle triangle that you see on this, on the fourth quadrant. Find the angle inside this triangle and the opposite is 1, hypotenuse is root 2 and also adjacent side is 1. You may use the tan and the inverse of the tan and find the angle phi. So the tan minus 1 of 1 over 1 give you an angle pi over 4.
The angle phi is the angle inside this right angle triangle. This is the angle phi, okay? This is the angle that I want to find, and that's why I use the tan. Now, to express the phi, this angle need to be go anticlockwise and go into the position of the vector A. So, if it can also go clockwise, in case I go clockwise, the angle will be negative. So, because I start from the zero and I go clockwise, this angle needs to be negative pi over 4. And because the, this is the right angle triangle here, you see it's on the fourth quadrant. So this is will be negative here for clockwise and positive for anticlockwise. So the vector A in polar form will have these parameters. So we write A is equal to root 2 comma minus pi over 4. And these are the polar coordinates of the vector A. And next we are going to find the polar coordinates of the vector B. And the vector B is the one that points upward, that is, lies on the vertical axis. And it's very easy. If it lies on the vertical axis, you can find the polar coordinates straight away because the length is exactly 2. And the angle, as you can see here, is pi over 2. It's very easy, so you don't even need to use trigonometry. So for the vector B, you write the polar coordinates as 2 for the length and for the angle pi over 2. This is for the vector B. And next we're going to find the vector E. The vector E is the vector on the second quadrant. This is the first quadrant, the second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. And you can use exactly the similar logic as we did with the vector A, the triangle here has sides 1 and 2, so by using the formula r is the square root of 1 square plus 2 square, you can find the value of the r. So to find the vector e, use exactly the same method. So for the r, I use the square root of 1 square plus 2 squared give us root 5. And what is what is left to find here is the angle. And the angle needs to start from 0 going anticlockwise up to the vector E. To find this angle, because the angle is obtuse, I need to find the, I need to use this right angle triangle and use the sides. Okay, this, if I use this right angle triangle here on the second quadrant, and let's clarify the triangle. The triangle is the A, B, O, the origin. So using this triangle, I can also find the angle of the triangle, this angle, which is very relevant. And once I found this angle, I can do pi minus this and find the phi. So I, to find this angle, I use the inverse of the tan again. This is distance is 2. So the phi is, because the tan is tan theta is equal to 2 over 1. So this is the inverse of the 2. And using the calculator, the inverse tan in radians is 
is 1.11. Since the angle phi is the opposite, is the obtuse angle, I need to make an adjustment and find the angle phi as pi minus 1.11. So this gives you the angle that we are looking for. The angle is 2.034. On this exercise, we can change Cartesian to polar coordinates and also polar coordinates into Cartesian coordinates. And here I have one pair, a pair of point, 1, 1, Cartesian form, and I want to find the polar form. To find the polar form, I need to find the R and also the angle phi. The R, that's why I make a triangle here so you can see the trigonometry I use because once you see the trigonometry the process is very easy. So I have here a right angle triangle that is from a vector. The vector is the point So this is the vector 1, 1, 1, 1. So to find the R, I use the Pythagoras theorem, which is the R is the square root of 1 square. This is the base, and the height is 1. So this is root 2. And to find this angle, I use the tan opposite adjacent side. This is the angle phi of the vector. So I use the tan, tan phi is equal to one over one. So the phi is the inverse of tan one. So this is pi over 4. And now in polar form this vector is root 2. You write this as root 2 comma pi over 4. So this is root 2 comma pi over 4. And the next I'm going to do the opposite, changing the polar form into Cartesian coordinates. So by using exactly the same triangle, a, a right angle triangle, this triangle is on the fourth quadrant because the angle is negative. So the horizontal axis is the X. I want to find, this is the side I want to find for the I. So I want to express the vector as I plus J. This angle here is pi over 4. four. So I can use these two parameters and find the side, the adjacent side, which is the number in front of the i. Okay, this is the x coordinate. So by using trigonometry, I can use the ratios, the ratios sine theta or the cosine theta or the tan theta to find any of the sides of this triangle. The sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse, the tan theta is the opposite over the adjacent. And I can also do the opposite, for example, to find the opposite is sine theta times hypotenuse. Okay, so I can change this equation to help me find the sides of the triangle. So the opposite, it can be the x, 
and therefore this is the hypotenuse times the sine theta also the adjacent side it will be hypotenuse times the cosine theta Okay, by using these equations, I can find the x and the y Cartesian coordinates. So, here I want to find this side here, the x. I have the angle and I have the hypotenuse. So I need to use the cosine. So the cosine of pi over 4 is x over 4 so the x will be 4 times the cosine of pi over 4 so the value will be So the number here in front of the i is the 2 square root of 2. And now going to the number in front of the j, the j will be the vertical distance on this triangle. And again I'm going to use a different trigonometric ratio because the opposite and uh, hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the sine, the sine of pi over 4 is the opposite, the y over the hypotenuse. So the y is 4 times the sine pi over 4. So 4 times the sine of pi over 4 give us an angle of, give us a value of 2 root 2. Or the second vector is on the fourth quadrant. The angle is negative. Minus pi over 4 means is on the fourth quadrant. And therefore the y have to be negative here. So you need to do the adjustment at the end. Even though the, si the size is 2 root 2, you need to make it negative. And the reason because this vector, the minus pi over 4 is on the fourth quadrant. The first vector is on the first quadrant. This is on the first quadrant and both x and y are positive. On this exercise we need to find the displacement of leads from Bristol in polar form. I have the diagram to the right hand side and you see the distance is 296 kilometers and north 15 degrees east so it have to be in the first quadrant the leads have to be in the first quadrant this is the y axis this is the x axis and to express in polar form i need to find the parameters r and phi so the angle f this is the angle 15 so what I'm looking now is from zero up to the angle of the vector is 90 minus 15. So it is 75 degrees. This is the angle that we are looking for. Starting from zero, going anti-clockwise. That is, are the positive angles and clockwise are the negative angles. So we go anti-clockwise from zero, so the angle is 75. So the phi is 75 degrees. And what is left here is to find the value of the r. The value of the r is the distance from Bristol to Leeds, and is 296. So we write here 296. In case you want to express the 75 degrees in radians, you need to, you already know that 1 pi is 180, so 75 degrees. You can divide 75, divide it by 180, and you do pi over 12. So you do pi over 12, pi, and 296. And this is, these are the polar form. These are the 
polar form of the displacement, the displacement vector. And all we use is trigonometry. Right angle triangles, Pythagoras theorem, and the trigonometric ratios, the sine, cosine, and the tan. I hope you enjoy the video.